All right, so it's coming along. Let me give you an update here and tell you where I'm at in progress, okay? From the video um, from this weekend, a lot of people had questions and they're like, that's cool, but where is the driven elements? Where is the feed point? How does it hook up? Okay, let me show you. And I'm gonna, please stay tuned because I'm gonna ask you guys for some help here because I've done a thousand Yaggies in my life, but for some reason, this one's whipping my ass, all right? Now, this is the, um, the, the switching balance, switching circuitry. I say circuitry because of this. So this antenna is the, again, the high gain UB7030 SAT. It's a circular polarized right hand or left hand circular, circular Oscar antenna for 432 to 436 megahertz, okay? So you use this for satellites. It's 30 elements, 15 horizontal, 15 vertical. And I'll show you about the tripod here in a minute while well, I'm, I'm almost done with this project here. Um, so I mounted this, okay? And the way this works is, so you have the driven elements, right? You have your reflector, then you have driven one, and then you have reflector, driven two, or horizontal or vertical here and horizontal, depending on how you arrange this, you know, if it's in an X, you know, on the, on the tripod here, you get the idea. Okay. So what happens is with just the way it sits, okay based on the manual, it is going to use this one as the driven element, all right? When, with this wire here, when you apply nine to 15 volts with this wire, it switches in here. And now you're running on this driven element. So you see, reflector, driven element, reflector, driven element. And they basically attach like this, all right? If you can see that. All right, and um, so you could choose right hand or left hand polarization. So I'm gonna be using this for EME moon bounce on JT65 and 100 watts um, with some really good people asked, oh, you gotta have some, some good feed line. This is 7 8 Heliac, uh, Heliax, 7 8 Hardline with some really good connectors on here. I have abundance of that. I also have inch and a quarter. If I really wanted to use it, I have plenty of inch and a quarter, but the connectors for those are very expensive. This has been sitting over here for years, but there is ends on there, they're taped off, so. By the way, if you see right here, see? That's inch and a quarter. It's like hollow in the middle. Very, very low loss, but I don't think I need something like that. So we'll stick with the seven eighths, okay? Now, um, I told you that I was missing a couple elements, right? So if you notice, this one's a little different. I went to tractor supply and I got me some 3 8 3 16 steel rod, right? Because there is a aluminum rod that comes with it, okay? That was, it seems a tad bit short. The manual says for the driven element, it's a 12 and a quarter piece, uh, 12 and a quarter inches long. Each side should be exposed five and nine sixteenths of an inch with the black, the black band, right? Or the black band. Okay. So it's not that long. It's not 12 and a quarter inches long and it's not five and nine sixteenths. It's more like five and one thirty seconds exposed in that. And I'm using my rig expert AA 2000 zoom, right? So in that I cannot get this thing below 479 megahertz. Now, 479 megahertz, it is 1.01 .01 to one SWR. Um, so what I did was I changed this element. I cut it long at 13, 13.2 inches. And I, I say, well, I can start cutting it off, you know, and trim it down. No, it doesn't, it doesn't change it. It doesn't change anything. So then, before I did that and changed this, I applied nine volts or 12 volt, little nine volt battery to that wire and it switched, okay? And now it was on this driven element. And I said, okay, well, maybe we'll see if this one, same thing. It's like 478 megahertz. So I cannot get this thing down to 432 and I'm not sure why. If, if you guys have seen something like this, let me go like this, all right? All right. So that's, that's the, the, the well, I guess the feed point, the driven element. So I did change the spacing that says it should be an inch and a quarter from here to the inside of this bracket here, inch and a quarter from here to the inside bracket. I've moved it out, I've spaced it out, I've tucked it in, doesn't change, doesn't change. Um, so I don't, I don't know if I have a problem with this balance here, I'm not sure. I mean, this thing 
hell for all i know with the ants that were in the box from eight years ago could be something inside the switching circuitry that's that's a very good point although it was wrapped up sealed tight in plastic and bubble wrap so i mean i don't think anything got in there um so i'm not sure what to do here's the other, only other one other question i have is all right if does it matter on this side of the boom versus this side i would imagine that if you're looking at this here right i don't think it will matter if this is mounted on the bottom touching the same driven element if if it does then well i got it backwards but um the manual is a little bit sketchy in some spots it, it shows this thing i mean could this be too close to that driven element but then again why is this one doing the same thing right I'm not exactly sure what to do. So if you have any comments or questions, I mean, advice, let me know. Because, I mean, this thing's getting pretty close to, I mean, I got that thing pretty straight. Look at that. I got the elements pretty straight, man. And for the most part, when you look at it, when you measure those, they are going down, you know, down all the way to the end. But the good thing about it is, where's my other piece of rod? There's a piece of rod, yeah, the one I just cut for this. So if this doesn't work, I could always use this, as I said in the beginning video, uh, for I got one, two elements missing. Well, now I don't, because I bought the 3 16 tube, or, you know, steel rod, so I can finish that, because it was missing. I've tripped over this box a thousand times today. Yeah, anyways, all right, so that's that. Um, the only other thing I'm gonna do now, I did say make like a, a thing, but you remember this old tripod? Yeah. I've had that now for five, five plus years. Got it from Giga Parts, all aluminum tripod, 34 foot carbon fiber mast. Now I did take out a couple of these sections to where I could fit a one inch piece of PVC. And what I'm gonna do is um, I'm going to cut it about uh, here, put a 90 degree elbow, come over with a piece, 90 degree elbow. And then that way I could bolt. All right, this box has gotta go. That's gotta go right there. All right, so then I, I could kind of go up, over, up, and then I could take this thing, go up and down with it, turn it this way, and uh, maybe a couple hose clamps around the PVC elbows to keep them stiff where I can move it with the Armstrong method, but not um, not have it fall. You know, I don't want this thing to bleep, just, you know, hang over because of the weight. So that's what I'm about to do. And like I said, with the with the moon going this way or this way depending on time of the year you're in i should be able to get plenty of view it it, it would suck you know it sucks if the moon's coming up over the horizon maybe i'll take to the beach i don't know get right on that horizon man that would be pretty cool but anyways um that's where i'm at right now just to ramble um and uh yeah, if you have any suggestions, I mean, I, I, I even questioned my rig expert analyzer and put a 50 ohm load on there. It was, you know, 50 ohm match right there, perfect, zero reflected or, you know, high, uh, zero SWR, 1.0 to 1. So the analyzer is working. I don't know why I can't get the driven elements anything lower than 479 megahertz. So that's where I'm at. Maybe I got to take this apart. And, uh, yeah, so that's uh, progress of part two on my backyard EME moon bounce.